these artists of all different disciplines joined together. So no one art style was more important than the other. So the artisan and the artist were actually treated as the same. This video is actually a little bit bigger than the screen. If you want to watch this video on, uh, completely, uh, you can watch it on the D2L webs on the D2L uh, site. Okay. So um, the goal, the ultimate goal for the Bauhaus was that everything that is art is the building, the building structure. Since it was uh, actually created by architects, it was also created by architects for all designers. So the whole philosophy of, of building stems to all of the different disciplines. Um, so when we're looking at this, um, Gropius, Gropius explained his vision for a union of art and design in the proclamation of the Bauhaus in 1919 that encouraged a selected group of professionals combining architecture, sculpture, and painting into a, a creative expression. Gropius, Gropius developed a craft-based curriculum that would turn artisans and designers capable of creating useful and beautiful objects appropriate to this new living system. So the designers that were brought on board to be teachers and instructors to this school were in their own right great uh, artists, uh, well-known artists. And some of those were Marianne Brandt. Um, she actually had several different, um, uh, she, she worked with like this teapot, very functional, very much a sign of the times during the, uh, the Bauhaus period. Uh, it actually has a deco look about it. She also uh, created several other types of uh, uh, tabletop type uh, pieces. Uh, Paul Clay, and actually his name is pronounced Pal Clay, uh, Pat, you know, he did painting, but a lot of his was tapestry design or uh, design ideas for like uh, architectural structures and things like that. Marcel Brewer, another famous um, architect, but also a sculptor, and he invented uh, the the um, uh, the uh, Wassily chair. And this chair, it's basically tubular. He actually used a bicycle to, uh, the handlebars on the bicycle to create this chair, uh, the, the original idea for it. So, and we see a lot of these chairs now, probably in doctor's offices, uh, class, you know, in the school, uh, you know, foyers and anywhere you go into a building, you might see a more of a structure look. They'll have these types of chairs, uh, waiting rooms, what have you. Joseph Albers uh, worked with color theory and um, the harmony of color. We're talking about color right uh, last week. Uh, so uh, one of the projects that's going to be uh, you're going to be working on is color harmony and how to uh, build a, a particular palette and his ideas of utilizing color and mixing colors to come up with how color relates to uh, and feels with certain, you know, when they're put together, how they feel together. So that's kind of what his uh, idea was about utilizing color and patterns. Wassily Kandinsky, he's probably one of my most fa uh, favorite artists of all times. Um, I really like his style. It was very linear, uh, angular, uh, you might say it's busy, but it's really not busy. It kind of tells a story. And if you think about it, a lot of what we do now with VR and other types of uh, creative uh, design stems from what Kandinsky actually created in, uh, you know, floating elements 
in 3D. So uh, Kandinsky is probably one of the most prominent artists during this period. And he was a Russian painter and a very, very well-known painter. I would recommend looking him up and kind of seeing what his ideas are. Matter of fact, we have an assignment that uh, actually utilizes the Kandinsky color model. So the teaching at the Bauhaus, uh, this is a con uh, conceptual design. As you can see, it's circular. And this side over here is the German representation of the actual curriculum. And then this is a, um, you know, a um, English version. Um, you have the preliminary courses, which um, they, uh, let me find out exactly about what we did with the preliminary. So this was uh, Johann's Eaton, 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 some of these names I'm not sure about. So I believe that instead of getting students to copy from models that was done at traditional art studios, he encouraged students to produce their own creative designs based on their own perceptions. So the preliminary courses were actually taught uh, by uh, artists and designers and artisans were uh, all together determining which direction that they wanted to go into in their design or, you know, as far as what they wanted to be, um, whether they wanted to be a graphic designer, whether they wanted to be a sculpture, an architect, uh, tapestry design, or what have you. So they would kind of get their idea in this preliminary course. Then they would go in and start looking at the uh, different studies of based on what direction they wanted to go into and then more detailed and then uh, they would start doing more in the building and testing and design stages and then they would work to make their pieces more functional and that was the whole idea behind the uh, the Bauhaus uh, was to make whatever designs that you do a functional piece that can be useful in uh, whatever situation so that's the whole idea form and color of the Bauhaus so the end and aim of the artistic endeavor is the liberation of the spiritual essence of form and color and its release 